Silence, Earthling. My name is Darth Vader, and I'm an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. This is your look at the new NECA toys. Back to the future Ultimate Marty McFly, Tales from Space. Marty McFly and Doc Brown experience the adventure of a lifetime in an unlikely time machine as they travel the past, the present, and the future, setting off a time-shattering chain reaction that disrupts the time-space continuum. Before we get a closer look at Marty McFly, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Technically, yes, he does have a swappable head sculpt. This is the one that he comes out of the packaging with, but I'll show you what the other one looks like. I'm going to take it to the very top of only his helmet, because technically that front visor piece does shift up. Stay tuned. We'll show you more of that in a second. The figure stands, though, 7 inches exactly. And switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing 17.9, almost 18 centimeters in height like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys for providing the sample of Marty McFly that we're going to be having a look at in this review. If you're interested in picking up Tales from Space Marty McFly, you should be able now to find him in retail stores. To do some comparisons, let's bring in Biff, we just recently had a look at. And let's also bring in Back to the Future 2 Marty McFly. To no surprise, Marty McFly is a lot shorter than Biff. He's actually a little bit taller as well than Back to the Future 2 Marty, but it's only because, again, he's wearing that helmet. The only thing that is omitted from this mix is the original Back to the Future Marty, which we will be having a look at in an upcoming review, so stay tuned for that. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the figure's accessories, and he does come with a fair bit of accessories, enough to give him three different distinct looks. The first thing we'll have a look at, though, is his little tiny Walkman to do a little bit of persuading for George, of course, to ask Lorraine to the dance. Um, one only thing that's really missing specifically from this Walkman is an Edward Van Halen tape inside. But as you can see, it does have attached to it the headphones that he would fit around George's head. The only thing, of course, missing from this is George's head, which I don't know if we are actually going to be getting one because I don't know if we have the likeness rights to Crispin Glover. I certainly do hope we get our subs of George McFly down the road. But in the meantime, we do certainly have a Walkman that could be fit around his head. An interesting thing about the headset, though, is that it's very soft rubber. I guess they just did the whole thing in rubbery plastic. I mean, again, it doesn't really attach to anything because we really don't have a George head for the time being. But I'm glad to see that we do have that included. That does fit into his hand. I'll talk about that in a second as well. He does, of course, come with his hair dryer as well. The hair dryer in some scenes, mostly in the cut scenes, you can see the end of it lit up in red. Here, though, it's not lit up in red, but it does have some nice little buttons done on the side in blue and red, and a coloring of black and gray goes, goes for it. It actually even does have the plug on the end of it. That's a really nice touch also on their part. Now, you can also fit this into his hand. We'll just do some hand-holding accessories for the time being. Uh, you can go ahead and pry the finger away from itself, pry it away from the palm, and you can have the hair dryer pointed right at George. One thing I would like to display, I think, him with, though, the way that he had it most of the movie, is he sort of has, or at least the beginning of the, of the scene, he has sort of that hair dryer tucked into this belt. And you can pull it off. The belt is just rubbery enough, just has a little enough give of it that you can actually fit the hair dryer into the side. And that's probably going to be where I'm going to display it. I'll just probably move it a little bit more over to the side, sort of like the way he has it at the beginning of that scene. The other hand, now this hand, of course, for the hairdryer, this hand right here is gripped in such the way that you can take the Walkman and you can just slide it in between, again, the, the four fingers and the thumb, just like that. And again, when it comes to displaying the figure, I'm probably going to have it like this with his helmet on, just again, like it has at the beginning of that scene. So you can do that. We're going to go ahead and take those accessories out of his hand. We'll look at the alternate head sculpt then. Actually, you know what? We'll just hold on to the figure. We'll bring in the other alternate head sculpt. And I'll show you what you can then do with the other accessories that come included with the figure. So he comes with two variations of the head sculpt. Not much does get changed. Of course, this one does have the helmet over top of it. And the helmet isn't removable, just in case you're wondering. The whole reasoning why they did give you the alternate head sculpt is simply because, again, like this helmet, this top helmet isn't removable at all. 
I really do like this head sculpt on Marty McFly. I'm just going to put the figure down for one second. I just want to also bring in the Marty McFly that came included with the Back to the Future 2 release, Marty, just to show you the difference between the two. Now, I personally feel like this is a stronger head sculpt looking more like Marty than this one did right here. But the benefit of it is it does use similar sized ball, uh, ball sockets. This one looks like it's a little bit bigger, but it's not to say that you probably couldn't fit this one around. I'm just going to grab the Back to the Future 2 Marty McFly, pop the head off the ball joint. I'm curious, actually, why NECA switched from going the post system in now favor of going the more ball joint like we used to get with the older figures. But nonetheless, you can actually just take Marty McFly's head. I probably believe we'll have to submerge the head in hot water because I think the hole is just one tad smaller than the ball joint. But again, you can, if you wanted to, you could use this head sculpt instead versus the one that came included with the figure. I just feel like I, I, the hair, granted, yes, is a little fuller on Back to the Future 2 Marty, but I do think like the one that came included with the Tales from Space Marty might be a better looking likeness overall. Let me just show you how you change out the head sculpts here. You got to be a little bit more careful because this front visor that swings down in front of Marty's face. This would, of course, when you add the rest of the pieces, make up the re remainder of his uh, radiation suit that he has. But if you want to do change with the head sculpts, I find it's easier to lift this up first and then get your finger just on either side. Because if you have the visor down, I feel like if you're going to put pressure against it, it may crack it. But just wiggle this off and pop that off the ball joint. One thing that was kind of surprising when I first saw it was that they used a yellow ball joint instead of, I guess, more of a flesh tone. You're not going to see it anyways. But if you do want to replace it to the alternate head sculpt, just wiggle that onto into place. And that's what it looks like right there. I think what I may end up doing is taking the head and submerging it in hot water. See if I can soften up the plastic around that socket joint. It may make things a little easier when it comes to putting the head back on. I still find like this particular head is just a little tighter. But you can see the difference between the head sculpts. Again, I'll bring in the other one. There's not really that much that does change between the two, other than this one, of course, has the helmet, and this one does not. The other accessories that come include with the figure, let me go ahead and just pop that off, put the original head sculpt in place. There we go. And just snap that in place. As I said, like this front visor does swing forward. I would have actually liked if this was a little bit more darker color, the frosting that they used for the plastic, just so you wouldn't see as much of Marty's face. Because again, like there's two different ways that you can display it. I guess if you wanted to have it, well, you know what, we'll start it with having it down. The couple of accessories it comes included with is the back of the radiation suit. And this just fits over top of the head sculpt. This sort of just fits around to the back, just like that. And you'll see that there's this lip right here. Get the camera to focus. There we go. This little lip right here slides just behind so that the visor is essentially fitting to the front of it. The other piece that comes included with it is this piece right here, which is that front flap that we see in the film. If you look at the back of it, or the top of it, I should say, there's like this little ledge, little canal there. And all you have to really do is take this and just slide it up into the visor. The visor basically just fits into that little canal and you get this finished look. It does look nice. But again, like if they had just made that a slightly darker coloring, um, I don't know if I like as much being able to see Marty's face through it that giving us that darker color that he has in the scene. I think you would just mask that completely and make him even more alien-like from, of course, the planet Vulcan. The other alternative to this is you just take this off, take the back part off, and what he does have, you flip this visor up. He has the same thing, but basically this attaches to the back of his head sculpt. So if you see it, see there's these little ledges on the top there. There's three of them, like little prongs. Those line up to the top of his helmet, and that just slides into place. His hard hat, I suppose, and that just attaches like so. And then the other thing he comes included with is the flap, but the flap is sticking out from the top. So all you have to do is just take this, and you just line it up inside those that little canal again. And you get this little piece right here. So essentially what it is, is he's lifted up the visor. And then this piece that was the collar piece is now sort of draping down. The last of the other accessories he comes included with is the removable helmet altogether. This, the whole mask completely. 
And of course, it doesn't work so much well with this head portrait of Marty, but it will most definitely work better with this particular head sculpt. So if you want to have this complete piece taken off, replace it with this head sculpt, and then you can just display this. There's a little hook on the end of it, and it sits just inside his hand, it sort of rests onto his finger, just like so. And he can kind of just carry around his mask. Obviously, it doesn't most look the most successful when I've literally still got it attached to his shoulders, but he does have that look if you want to go with the unmasked Marty portrait instead. Accessories aside, let's get a closer look at Marty McFly. Now, this is Tales from Space Marty, of course, now wearing this suit. He still has just the peak of his denim jacket, the collar there sticking up. I don't know if they actually have used, I mean, it would involve me having to cut this open, which obviously I wouldn't want to. I don't know if they've actually just literally used the same Marty torso underneath, because it does look almost like there's a full jacket underneath that, minus the vest that he wears on top of it. But this is just basically soft rubber. All of this is. This up top, all the way down, all the way down here is all soft plastic. So it does make some sense. They didn't even have to really paint the torso that's underneath it and just add this rubbery overlay over top of it. The arms aren't. The arms are dense plastic. So this is the only section that does have the softer plastic. You can see they've sculpted the zipper and painted a nice silver. The majority of the costume color is more of a light Yemen lemon yellow with slightly more darker yellow around the area of the zipper. Again, I do like the fact that the belt is a separate loose piece. So again, if you wanted to tuck the uh, the hair dryer in there you can pull that off some nice little details is there were little radiation symbols there on his gloves the gloves are a more shinier plastic so they kind of mimic more like looking like rubber gloves um, it would have been nice though that they could have included like swappable hands so that he didn't always have a hand that looked like it should be holding something or another hand that looks like he should be pointing something or holding something that does have a trigger to it but uh I probably will be likely displaying the figure with both accessories anyways. Looking a little further down on the figure, this is again more dense plastic like the arms, done in that very nice light lemon yellow. Darker yellow down below and a little bit of areas of orange there also. You see his boots, or his shoes I should say, peeking out from the bottom with even a sculpt of socks still peeking its way down the bottom. You can still see it right there. Now the way that they've sculpted this, this, this all being solid plastic, is that if you look at it from the underside, like it's literally just all one molded mold as opposed to this being hollow. I can't imagine why they would need to make this hollow or make an indication of a, an actual pant leg underneath this. I mean, it serves its purpose fine. And you can see even funny enough, they actually put L and R on both sides just so they know which foot or which leg goes on which side. Spin the figure around to the back. Again, it's just a whole lot of yellow happening. But again, you get that little collar of denim sticking up from the bottom. And uh, we've also got a little snap there done on the back in black. Nice texture work to it. Though it doesn't have a lot of paint going for it, I really don't feel like it would need a whole lot of paint anyways for the purpose of what the suit is. You really don't need highlights and lowlights to it. It's literally just the suit they wear over top for protection. And it serves Marty perfectly to convince George to ask out uh, Lorraine. For the figure's articulation, let's go ahead and have a look at that right now. The head rotates all the way around. Again, I'm sure it doesn't have to be said, but I'll say it anyways. As you're rotating the head around, just be very, very careful of this, because again, you wouldn't want to break that off. It's attached on either side via these pegs. Again, I just kind of wish that that was a smokier plastic. But the head does hinge down, it does hinge up, and you can also rock it back and forth. They did a really great job of making this a softer plastic too. So when it comes to moving his head around, the collar stays completely out of the way. It's a nice touch. The shoulders hinge out, a little on the tight side on this figure, but again, I would rather tight joints than excessively loose joints. And you can actually get almost a full 90 degree angle bend. See, just like that. The arms rotate all the way around. It does have a single and double bend, one right there, one right there, that gives us two bends in the elbow. And he does have a rotation also around in the hand, which you can also hinge back and forth. When it comes to the lower legs or the torso itself, now the torso obviously is all encased in rubber, these softer rubbery plastic here. So it's really difficult to actually get any bit of motion and movement out of this guy. They could have probably put a little swivel cut right there. But really, again, that would just break up the mold. And that would also involve them having to create a brand new mold, the top and a bottom. And it's just too expensive. Like, just 
you can do the exact same thing just by producing one thing. And I'm not disappointed at all that he doesn't have any articulation here because, again, I'm not going to be giving him any crazy running poses or anything like that. The legs split out to only about there. Uh, you can also move the leg forward. You can move the leg back. It swivels at the top cut of the thigh. He has a double hinge on the knee. This, these, actually, this figure really much reminds me of like the space suits from Alien. Uh, especially especially the fact that the figures were produced also from NECA toys. But he does have a hinge in the knee. You can also rotate the lower leg. And as for his feet, his feet rotate all the way around. You can hinge them up, you can hinge them down, and you can rock them back and forth as well. Tales from Space, Marty McFly is a fun figure because it's somewhat an unexpected figure as well. I expect, if anything, we were going to be getting an 80s Marty McFly. Sure, that's the obvious. 2015 Marty McFly, sure, why not throw that in there? But... To get a Darth Vader, Marty McFly, pulled from the hat so quickly into this line. Nice touch on NECA's part. This particular scene stands out for me as one of my personal favorites from the original Back to the Future movie because you get to see Marty McFly playing around with stuff that they would have in the present time that would be so foreign and alien to George McFly. Playing even Edward Van Halen inside his Walkman. I mean, anyone from the 50s would be completely alarmed and not familiar at all with that blasting music. And again, it made for such a fun scene. This Marty does present very well and different because he doesn't look like the others. You can still sort of imagine underneath that rubber suit, he does have a regular denim jacket. And again, I don't even know if they've used the same mold, if they've just sculpted only the top of his collar and the rest of his body underneath that is just a standard basic body. But it's a really nice touch on their part to include different ways that you can display the figure. Here in Final Looks, I decided to swap it out a bit, change things up by the way I started this review. So instead of having him all donned up and wearing his spaceman suit at the beginning of this video, I wrapped things up by just having him holding it in his hand. And really nice on their part to give you those accessories. You can swap out his different heads. He has two of them. And then even the one that has the hard hat to it, you can then display it in two different ways. Either have it completely visored down, or you can have it lifted up and it looks like Marty's getting some air. I do think, though, the visor could have been a light, little bit darker, just a tad bit darker. So it would have hidden Marty's face a little bit more, made him look even more alien so that you don't know who's actually wearing the helmet. Other than that, though, such a great looking figure and a nice different change from the regular Marty McFly's that I would have expected Mar uh, ne NECA Toys to produce for this line. Well done, NECA Toys. Well done. A big thank you as well to NECA for providing this sample of Tales from Space, Marty. Uh, what do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comment section whether you picked the figure up for yourself or based on this review, let me know what you guys think of the figure down below in the comment section. Also, if you're new to the channel and perhaps you're digging the content you're seeing and maybe you like Van Halen, Consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turning the bell notification on, and staying tuned to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when new videos will be, of course, popping up. And lots of NECA stuff coming your way. So as always, keep those peepers peeled. Is that what they say in the future? No, that's what they say right now. And it's pretty much me. I'm the only one that says that. But definitely lots of videos coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.